here at New Life MCC, both here in the building and live on Facebook Live. And if you would join me now with, for the gathering call, you can pick up your worship sheet as um, Jeff leads us in English and Sandra leads us in Spanish. And please rise for the gathering call. Listen to them singing. In that day, the whole community of people will sing this song. We are, we are surrounded by the walls of God's, God's salvation. salvation. Open the gates to everyone, for all may enter in who love the Lord. Estamos rodeados por los muros de la salvación de Dios. Abran las puertas a todos para que entren todos los que aman el Señor. The Lord will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in the Lord those whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. Let us trust in the Lord God always, for, for the, the Lord, Lord Jehovah is our, our everlasting strength. strength. Confiemos siempre en el Señor Dios, porque en Señor, el Señor Jehovah está nuestra fuerza eterna. Lord, grant us peace, for all we have and are has come from you. From you. Señor, danos la paz, porque todo lo que tenemos y somos ha venido de ti. We have this assurance. Those who belong to God shall live again. Los que pertenecen a Dios volverán a vivir. Those who dwell in the dust shall awake and sing for joy. For God's light of life will renew us like the dew on the earth in the morning. Porque la luz de la vida de Dios nos renovará como el rocío, rocío, rocío en la tierra por la mañana. Thank you, and you may be seated as we continue to worship in music. Yeah. 
pray with me. Heavenly Creator, we thank you for this wonderful October day. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather here in this place and on Facebook Live to worship you, to honor you, to lift you up in song and prayer and word. We ask you to just bless each and every one of us, bind us together in your spirit because we know you are here among us, in us, and between us and around us. Over distance, we are together through you because of your majesty and your power and your might. We praise you and we thank you for these things, Jesus. Amen. 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 My name is Jim Whalen, Reverend Jim Whalen. I'll be facilitating the service today. Surprise to some of you is I will not be preaching today, though. Um, because we're celebrating 53 years of MCC ministry from 1968 to the present for the month of October, we're going to hear uh, a montage of pieces of our founder of our fellowship's uh, sermons. Reverend Troy Perry is going to be preaching to us today. What an honor and a privilege that is, I, I would say. Um, it, the Mother Church in Los Angeles, the church that Troy founded, the original MCC, uh, the current pastor, Reverend Keith Mazingo, put this together for us, and we thought it would be a, a, a really telling tribute today to hear Reverend Perry preach to us. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to facilitate us, as, as I usually do, hopefully in a very fine manner. <clears throat> So, so give me an applause of support. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's not about me. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> we have a lot going on here at uh, MCC, and I'd like to talk about a, a little bit of it, uh, the announcements. And one of the things that's going on today is the annual congregational forum. We're going to do, have that here on site and on Zoom online. So uh, the, the Zoom link has been sent out to many of you, and if not, uh, I apologize, but uh, hopefully you can find us or you can um, read the board meeting, the minutes from the meeting later. The agenda for congregational consideration is the third quarter financial update, the capital campaign update, proposed 2022 budget, Meet the candidates for the Board of Directors. Motion from the Board of Securing Finances to Purchase 1000 Sunset Drive property. Let's have a round of applause for that too. We deserve that. Each voting, or excuse me, early voting was available for those who were unable to attend and that will of course be uh, counted into the votes taken today. We also have a discussion and conversation does the Bible teach us about human sexuality? And that is presented to us by our Reverend Elder uh, Ken Martin. Ken Martin has been with the denomination for uh, just shortly after Troy Perry founded it in 1968. I'm not sure of when he came on, but he has been an elder in the fellowship and he is a wonderful, wonderful teacher and guide. And he's going to present that at www.sanctuaryonline.live. And the password for that is Sanctuary. If you'd like to hear that, uh, that continues today. That's been an ongoing series, and he's going to be taking questions and, and offering answers to questions this week. Uh, you can, if you need more information from that, you can find it on our website, or you can find it on your worship sheet if you have that in front of you. Also, our Meals to Go ministry, our next meal assembly is scheduled for Saturday, October 30th, 10 a.m. at Saunder Morocco's River House. The menu is lasagna, seasoned green beans, and cookies. Please contact Matt or Morocco for, uh, if you want to, you know, either help assemble meals or to cook meals or both. Uh, did you have anything to add to that, Morocco? And we, our grief support group continues to meet monthly on the first Tuesdays of every month. And the next meeting is 7 p.m. November 2nd here at the church. That support network is available for anyone who feels that they need to be supported through struggling with grief of the loss of a loved one or other issues of involving loss and grief. We also have scheduled a winter fun weekend. Oh my gosh, it's still shorts and t-shirt weather and we're planning for the winter already. 
But uh, yeah, <laughs> if you like to ski, if you like the snow, this is a wonderful winter fun weekend. It's in Davis, West Virginia. It's January 15th. That's Martin Luther King weekend. It's a time to make reservations. And if you'd like to do that, contact Charles Hauser. Or for more info, Charles' phone number is published here in your worship sheet. Charles, do you have anything to add about that? We look forward to fun. Yes, fun. <laughs> And our ongoing ministry for prayer penny jars, uh, that's something that one of our congregants um, started. Um, mm, I'm struggling with her name. Help me out here. Linda. Linda. My apologies, Linda. Every once in a while, you know, the synapses just don't quite come together the way they're supposed to. But Linda has started a prayer penny uh, ministry that it feeds and schools children in um, the Dominican Republic. And it, it's, it's amazing what pennies can do for these children. So if you're saving your pennies, she's got jars in the back to put them in and give them to her and she sends it down there and it takes care of so many children and so many needs. It's a wonderful ministry. And again, th forgive me, Linda. <laughs> Thank you for your giving, uh, for your tithes. That's also ongoing. And I'd like to continue with worship now by talking about um, the candles that we see in front of us on the altar rail. These candles represent all the people of God. All these different colors stand for different things, the rainbow of the people of God. They, we are lighting them today in honor of our honoring our 53rd year of MCC ministry. We're honoring them, I mean, lighting them today in honor of Hispanic Month uh, for all the Hispanic people who are represented here and in our church and out there on Facebook Live who are not always represented elsewhere. We also have a pink candle on the altar, you'll see, that's for uh, breast, aware, uh, breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we're lighting that. As we sing this next song, James and uh, Rich will be lighting those candles for us. Thank you. You may please rise for the scripture readings today. And our scriptures will be read to us by the uh, mother-son team of Isaac and Sarah. <laughs> All right. 
John chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. Very truly, I tell you, tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them, when he has brought them out all on his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep will follow him because they know his voice. But they will never know a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus uses this figure's, this figure's speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. The Roman chapter 8 is selected verses. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives a life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you mm -hmm. receive does not make you a slave, so that you live in, you live in uh, fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about you adoption to the children of God. Now, if you are children, then we are heir, heir of the God and co-heir of Christ. If indeed we share in this, his suffering in order that we may also share his glory. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither an angels or demon, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height or depth, or anything else in all creation, we will be separate us from the love of God that is the, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the rightness of the believing world. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
may be seated. This is the time of our service when we come together in community, as the song was talking about community. We come together as a community of God's people in prayer, a time for us to share our prayers with each other, to um, acknowledge that God hears us, and to acknowledge that we hear each other, and because God works through each of us and is in each of us and surrounds all of us into one thing, one God, one being. As we approach God in prayer this morning, let us remember that we have uh, all kinds of people listening to us and here in this room. We all have uh, needs, we all have praises, we all have uh, prayers, we have various things. Certain things have gone on this week. People have lost loved ones. People have gotten jobs. People, other things I've heard about, people are in need with their car and their home. Uh, I talked to someone this morning who is being booted out of their, their apartment. Um, we have so many needs, and God hears them all. So I'm going to uh, ask you to just take a moment of silent prayer and then we will open it up for you to vocalize your prayers and your praises with each other here in this room. And for those of you on Facebook, you may also say them out loud wherever you are. O oh God, hear our prayers. I thank you, Lord, for this church. Quiet group today. <laughs> We thank you for your spirit, for your shadow of love that you put over all of us. We thank you, God, for connecting us all together in this way, both, both here and in the distance through Facebook Live, for connecting us and knowing that you surround us with your love and that you surround us with your presence and that you hear our prayers and we honor you for the things that um, we, have, we praise you for and we just ask you to continue to lift us up in all the ways that you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just want to 
This is the time of our service when we, um, we talk about giving back. It's all the things that uh, we just talked about in prayer that God has given us and does for us. This is the time when we talk about giving back. And one of the, the things that uh, we talk about is our, uh, well, three things actually, our time, our talent, and our, our, our money are the three things that we talk about. And they, they're equally important because we may have all the money in the world, but if we don't have the time to do the ministry that the money gives us the opportunity to do, then it doesn't get done. And if we don't use the talents that we have, then it doesn't get done. So this is about all three of those things, our time, our talent, and our money put to use to give back to God, or say it another way, to give to each other the things that God has given us, to provide for each other God here on earth, Jesus among us in the flesh. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So we talk about giving back our time, our talent, and our money. And this is the opportunity to do it. We have uh, ministries that uh, need people to assist with. We have um, things going on in the building that we need um, assistance with if you have the talent or the time to do them. I know the uh, buildings and maintenance needs um, some support from more people and some other ministries need some support. You can talk to me about that later. And we also, of course, need the money to keep the lights on and the doors open and the, the, all of the things that it takes, the heat, the air conditioning, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got um, offer pla offering plates around the church. You may get up at any time and put your offering in them. We're not passing the offering because of the COVID concerns, but uh, you may give back in that way. And we also accept your offerings by the electronic kiosk in the back. You can use a credit card there, or you can do uh, pay uh, through a credit card online on our website. And uh, I'm sure someone will type that uh, site into the your Facebook Live so you can see that and find that in just a moment. So this is what we do here. We do ministry and we only do it together by offering those things to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the time of our service where we uh, normally have a word from whoever is standing in front of you. Uh, today, as I said earlier, it's going to be different. Would the, would the worship team like to come down or are you going to stay in place? Pardon me? You're going to move. Okay, we're moving. We're moving right along. Uh, I'd like to say a little bit more about Reverend Troy Perry for, for those of you either here in the building or out there on Facebook Live that don't, aren't, aren't really truly aware of his story. And Troy was a uh, young, defrocked uh, Pentecostal minister 
who had uh, moved from uh, Florida, I believe it was, where he had his ministry, uh, to Los Angeles because he had discovered that he was a gay man and he had left behind a wife and a child and he had lost his ministry and he was really pushed to the limits of his faith at that point in his life. And Troy actually attempted suicide and when he was in the hospital in the emergency room, God came to him in the shape of a black nurse <laughs> and told him that there was so much more for him to do and he needed to get his act together in essence. I'm paraphrasing. And Troy left and he prayed and he just did not know what to do with his life because everything that he'd been told by the, the Pentecostal ministry that he was involved in told him he could not be homosexual and Christian. And yet he did not know how to not be homosexual. And so he eventually put an ad in a paper, in a gay paper in Los Angeles, and invited people to come to a worship service in his living room. He lived in a very tiny house, and um, 12 people showed up. I think there's some significance there that it was, the number was 12. But 12 people showed up, and they had worship service. And MCC was born, and it grew. Um, uh, it, it grew because the time was right, because uh, Troy had listened to God, and Troy uh, knew that people were hungry for their spirituality. LGBTQ plus people were hungry for spirituality. And the word went out, and people all over the country wanted their own MCCs. So the, the fellowship of the denomination was born. And I'll tell you, it was a lot like the Wild West back then. I mean, if somebody had a Bible and they were willing to travel, they became a pastor at a, uh, for a group that needed it, you know, somewhere across the country. Well, that's, that's in, in a very small nutshell, who Troy is. But he's also a very charismatic speaker. Uh, Troy's a, a storyteller and just a, a wonderful to listen to, uplifting and in, inspirational. And we're going to hear bits and pieces of his sermons here. One of the things that happened to him in his journey to finding the church was that God told him to reread the Bible. Everything he'd been taught by the Pentecostals um, was just one view. And God said, reread the Bible. And he's going to talk about that in one of the snippets in, uh, in what we're about to see. So please sit back and enjoy the sermon by Reverend Elder Troy Perry. Oh God, now that you would reach down and anoint and bless us. We're thankful, O oh Lord, for your words this morning. I ask, O oh God, touch these lips of clay. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would give me the words to say to the saints gathered here. I ask, O oh God, help us to open up our hearts and minds so that we might hide your words there, so that we might not sin against you. I ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our Sovereign, our Savior. Amen. And amen. There were always two people in Scripture that I always loved as a kid. Uh, one was Noah, and I know everybody in this room who's ever been to church or Sunday school knows the story of Noah. Those animals two by two, and I always tell people the reason I liked it was number one, Noah listened to the voice of God. In the middle of everything, when everybody told him, uh, you know, what are you doing, Noah? And he's building the boat, and everybody laughs at him. And uh, he keeps building the boat, and they keep laughing until the day it rains. And uh, amen. You know, I've always loved him because he lives there. The other reason I loved it was because of my little town of Winter Haven, Florida, where I went to Baptist Sunday school. When I used to come out of our Baptist church, there was a bar right across the street, and the name of the bar was Noah's Ark. <laughs> and their slogan was, come on in, children, it's going to rain. <laughs> And I used to, as a kid, just love coming out and seeing that bar across the street. One of my favorite characters in Scripture. 
I've always stopped and looked how God speaks to people. I, I remember the prophet of God who one day goes to the backside of nowhere and is starving to death. And finally, you know, the birds come and feed the prophet of God. And the prophet's find, trying to find God. And everything has gone wrong, he feels like. And all at once, he's listening for the voice of God. And a tornado comes by, a hurricane comes by, an earthquake takes place. Everything happens... And finally, he's listening to all of that, trying to hear and thinking God's going to speak to him out of this great storms and out of the earthquake when the Word of God says that God spoke to him that still, small voice. And God spoke to me in that just gentle, still, small voice my mind's ear and said to me, Troy, because I kept arguing, God, I'm still a practicing homosexual. This can't be you, God. You can't love me. How many of us have done that number? Amen. And all at once, God spoke to me and said, Troy, don't tell me what I can and can't do. I love you. You're my son. I don't have stepsons and daughters. It took me three months before I woke up and realized, well, if God loves me as a gay person, God has to love other gay people too. Amen. Amen. I want you to know this. If we are to continue to be the church God has called us to be, number one, we've got to listen to the voice of God. Amen. There's something about the voice of of God. I always love Moses. I, I don't know. You know, I always talk about Moses. Oh, I've loved Moses and the way he led the children of Israel. You know, Moses was just fearless. And yet, Moses had a disability. Most people don't realize this, but Moses had a disability. The Word of God said he was a stutterer and he couldn't talk. And as a result of that, he felt like God could not help him. And when God called him, it was Moses who said, I can't do it. I, I, I can't even uh, uh, talk, Lord. And it was God who said to him, you lead the children of Israel. Don't you worry about it. I'll get somebody to talk for you. You just lead the children of Israel. Your brother Aaron can talk if you're worried about that. But lead the children of Israel. And you know, he led the children of Israel. And there were many times they were hungry. There was many times they were thirsty. And the word of God, when they were thirsty, Moses would get upset with the children of Israel sometimes and say, God, I don't know what's wrong with them, Lord. Lord. Uh, they're never happy. There's always something wrong. And what do I do? And God, today it's water. They need water. What do you want me to do? And God said, what's that in your hand? And Moses always said, it's my shepherd's staff. And God would always speak and say, oh, then go walk up in the canyon. There's a rock up there. Walk up and smoke the rock and water will come out. And the Word of God says that one day Moses was so upset, and it was near the end of his ministry with the children of Israel, and all at once God, he, he, the same thing happened. Children of Israel, you brought us out here to die. We don't have water. Where are we going to get water? And God goes, uh, Moses goes to God in prayer and says, well, God, what am I going to do? And God said, you see that rock up there? And he says, yes. He said, go up and talk to the rock. And uh, my goodness, Moses went up, but he didn't talk to the rock. The Word of God says he took his staff and he hit the rock and he got the same result he always did. But God was upset with Moses. He said, I told you to talk to the rock, not smoke the rock. And I want to tell you something now. Sometimes God does things differently. Amen. And we have to realize that as the people of God. And here was, you know, Moses with that staff. And God calls Moses over and said, you disobeyed me. And as a result of it, you're not going to the promised land. And I used to think, God, you are evil to do that to poor Moses. He has led these people. You know, he could have lost his, lost it way before now, but he didn't. He's almost there. And here it is. But God tells Moses, you know, I wanted to teach the children of Israel a new lesson. The famous last words of the Christian church is, we've never Never done it this way before. Amen. And there God tries to speak to us. God tries to speak to the Christian church all the time. But that's the message God had. And yet I always love God because God has a way. You know, Moses died. His bones were later taken over into the promised land. But it took him a long time to get there in the flesh. We know who we who are Christians on the Mount of Transfiguration that Elijah and Moses showed up with Jesus that day. And Moses was right there in the promised land. Amen. I've got to tell you, if we listen to the voice of God, God will bless us. Now, one of my favorite comedians... 
uh, good old uh, God bless her heart, Lily Tomlin says, when we talk to God, it's called prayer. When God talks to us, it's called schizophrenia. And I've learned over the years that is not true. Amen. When we talk to God, God talks back. And members of this church, I want to tell you this morning, if God tells you to go over and talk to the wall, go talk to the wall. Amen. You don't know who's on the other side waiting for the message you're going to take to them. Amen. So listen to the voice of God. I want to tell you, when I started Metropolitan Community Church uh, 33 years ago, my goodness, I didn't know if anybody would come to that first service. I really didn't. I prayed. I did everything I felt like God warned me to. God spoke to me. I in that still small voice when I prayed, okay, God, I've tried to go to church. You know, my mother used to get on to me. What is wrong with you? Why do you have to tell everybody you're a homosexual? I said, Mother, because they asked. The second revelation that God spoke to me and said was, Reread my word. Because I'm busy. Oh, God, what am I going to do about these clobber scriptures? People scream at us. Oh, my God, what am I going to say? And sure enough, within six weeks, one of my former Pentecost, one of my best friends, Bob Belville, came up to me, or Jim Bivery, I'm sorry, his lover came up to me and was a Pentecostal boy. And he said, Now I want to talk about what the scripture says. And you know, all I had was God. I went to God in prayer and I said, God, what do I say? What do I tell people? And God said to me, reread my word. Now, I'd been rereading the word of God, you know, as a child raised in a Pentecostal Southern Baptist household. Those folks love the Bible. Amen. You read the Bible back then. Amen. In Sunday school, amen. You got a gold star if you knew how to read Scripture or quote it. That's how they did it. And I remember as I prayed and I said, Oh God, what am I going to say? And God says to me, Reread my word. And you know what? When people walk up to me today and just the way they say it, Do you know what the Bible says? We both know it, amen. <laughs> Loaded question number one, amen. And you know what? I started reading the words of God. And you know what I discovered? As I reread what the Bible said about what we were to become Christians, I started reading again. For God so loved the world that God gave the only begotten Son, that whosoever, if they're homosexuals or heterosexuals, believe in Jesus shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Only then, that was their put on word, if you're heterosexual. (laughs) Romans 8, 14, For as many are led by the Spirit of God and are heterosexuals, They are the sons and daughters of God. The inference was put right in there. John 1, 12. But as many as receive Jesus, to them Jesus gives power to become the daughters and sons of God, even to them that believe on Jesus' name, if they're heterosexuals. I had to reread the Word. All those inferences in my head I had to see what God really said all over again. Sometimes those old tapes in our heads. What God said to me and I had to remember was this. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. <laughs> Jeremiah 1.5 Genesis 1, 26-27 tells us we're all A-L-L made in the image of God. Psalms 137 tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made and all the days of our lives are known to God. Amen. I want to tell you this. All of us who grew up gay in the South like I did, oh my God, we thought one day, you know, that our mother's womb, she had us, and it was like Jack in the Box. Amen. Amen. All at once, Jack jumped out and God jumped back and said, Oh my God, a little homosexual. 
God never said that. Amen. God never said that. January 73, I received a telephone call. I'm in Denver, Colorado, that I had to rush home. The L.A. church was on fire. And I remember flying back, and it was the first building we owned. And my goodness gracious, when I finally got back into town, left Denver, blizzard. They had to take me out in a four-wheel drive to get me out the airport. On Sunday morning, I flew back into town. Pardon me, on uh, Saturday morning, and I flew back into town. And uh, when I got down to 22nd Union, the building there in ruins, and I always tell people, this is the truth. I can't help it. We had worked so hard. It was our first piece of property ever owned by a gay lesbian organization in the world. And there was our piece of property, and it's burned, and I couldn't help it. I broke down. I started crying. Willie Smith, who was our minister of music, whose home MCC started, walked up and put his arms around me. And he said, Troy, people are expecting you to be, show leadership now. And he said, you've really got to go over this. He says, my God, he said, uh, I want to tell you something, Troy. He said, the church didn't burn down. The building did. We're the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Has nothing to do with the building. It's about us and what we do with the gospel. And my goodness gracious, that Sunday morning, we gathered in the streets, and I don't know if anybody would come. Our people were still very closeted back then. I wasn't, but they were some of them. And we didn't know the burned out building can't keep TV away from you. And a thousand people showed up that morning. We had this service in the streets. Singing group, God bless her heart, showed up and told Willie, well, I'll sing if you all run uh, microphones over into the tent where nobody assists. And Willie Smith, being Willie Smith, said, Queen, the closet has burned down. That's the end of it. Either you sing in public or you don't sing anymore. Amen. And they sung that morning. Amen. They came out of the closet. You got to listen to God when you're afraid. Listen for that still small voice. Our church was set on fire in Atlanta three times in one week. By the time I got there, it was Easter weekend. I was going there to preach anyway. Oh, my goodness. We were all over the Atlanta Constitution, everything, because... Somebody kept, they'd done $25,000 to religious artwork around the walls and uh, had taken red paint and put it in our communion ware and dripped it over the altar. And I said, not our battle anymore. This is God's battle. Amen. They've just taken sacred things as far as I'm concerned. And they've done something they shouldn't have done. And all I can remember, you know, here's the TV camera crews all out in front of the church. We're getting ready for Easter services. People are frightened. You could cut it with a knife. Finally, uh, the pastor said, I want you to open with prayer and, you know, ask God to protect us this morning. We processed then. I got up. I said, Lord, I hope you'll send your angels this morning to protect us. We need your protection, oh, Lord. And uh, I got to tell you that uh, during, as we went on with service during the next hymn, all at once, the ushers started waving at Jimmy Brock and I. Jimmy was the pastor of the church at that time he's deceased now going on with the Lord but I got to tell you it was really funny we go to the back room here's this woman standing there I mean close cut hair black t-shirt combat boots and uh, you know military pants on stuck her hand out she's a Reverend Perry I'm so and so I'm the president of AFA she said the Atlanta Lesbian Feminist Alliance and she said, uh, I want to tell you something. She said, now, the women in my group don't go to church, but we've been watching what's been going on with y'all on television. And I brought 40 dykes this morning who have surrounded this church. If anybody tries to mess with you, she says, we're going to have problems. <laughs> now, I didn't know angels were lesbians in combat boots. Amen. But that morning they were for us, amen. God. <laughs> oh, an old saying in this church in the early days of MCC. A gentleman who came into church one day said, I need prayer. And my goodness, it seemed like every week he needed prayer. And he kept backsliding, needing prayer, backsliding, needing prayer. Finally, one day our staff, Pastor Reverend Paul Van Heck, said, I prayed for you for the last time. I'm not praying for you anymore. I put you on the altar. It's between you and God now. I prayed my last prayer. And oh my goodness, something happened. Oh, that person disappeared for about two weeks, came back. Oh, it's one of those Sunday night services. We used that the old mother church years ago down at 22nd Union. When I tell everybody, okay, this coming Sunday night is Levi's service. I want everybody to wear Levi's. Men, women, everybody. 500 people showed up in Levi's. 
And I said, we went ahead and we sang. We took up the offering. I said, now you're going to preach the sermon. This building is filthy. I said, we're going to clean it tonight. And I said, well, we're not having no regular service. You see, we're cleaning up the building. He said, Brother Perry, I really need to say something. I said, not tonight. This is the one who backs it and came back. Backs it. And I could smell the vomit and the booze and everything else. And I was immediately turned off. And he said, I need to say something to the church. I said, well, maybe during uh, the social hour you can say something. And we got downstairs, and this brother would not let up on me. He kept coming to me, and he kept saying, I've got to say something. And finally I said, social hall wants to say something. But from my body language, the way I said it, the church knew I didn't want him to say anything. And he said, I'm going to tell you what happened. And he got up and he told the story about how Reverend Paul Van had two weeks before and said, I prayed with you the last time. You know, I put you on the altar. You have to do something now. You keep coming back to the same thing over and over again. Now, he said, you've got to come to terms with that problem. And he said, since I got some man, I didn't know what to do. I went home. And he said, my little apartment down on Skid Row. He said, I walked in. And he said, I was mad with Prayer Reverend Paul Van Dyke. And he said, I took that bottle of wine. I was getting ready to drink the wine. And he said, all at once as I'm in the middle of the floor trying to get the top off of it, drunk out of my mind, I heard a voice. And that voice said to me, do you want to die? And he said, I stopped. And he said, I spoke out loud. And he said, no, I don't want to die. And he said, that boy said, think you got to help yourself. And he said, church, I got up, I walked over the sink, and I broke that bottle of wine. And he said, I let it run out. He said, I'm going to tell you something. I've had a drink in two weeks, and I've got the DTs up bad. I don't know what to do. Would y'all pray for me? And I'm going to tell you something. I felt so bad, I didn't know what to do. I thought, boy, the Holy Spirit checked Roy Perry real quick. We laid hands on David. And I want to tell you something. God. He got involved in AA, and it was five years later. I'll tell you when David Watson walked in MCC on Sunday morning and said, I'm going to tell you something. Tomorrow night is my fifth year sobriety. I want to invite the whole church to come and to be a part of my celebration. Next year is five years since I've had a drink. He said, I don't live on Skid Row anymore. I'm on a little house. He said, as you know, I'm on car now. He said, I've had a job for four and a half years at the same place. God's been good to me, church. I come to my party tomorrow night. And I want to tell you something. That next night, we all arrived to that party. And CC all got there, only to discover David wasn't there. We sent somebody around to his house, and they found that David had died. Sunday night in his bedroom with a smile on his face. I want to tell you, that man never looked. that I read off the internet and I just loved it. It's a true story about a little sobbing girl sitting outside of a church. The pastor comes along and she tells him, there's no place for me in the Sunday school. It's full already. And the pastor, seeing she was a very poor little girl, took her hand, walked her into the church, and got her a place in Sunday school. Two years later, that little girl passed away. The parents who were broken hearted called the pastor to come to help make arrangements for the funeral. When he arrived there and they turned over the body, they found she was clutching in her hands a little tattered purse. And when they opened that purse, there was 57 cents. And the little girl had written on a little piece of paper to help build more Sunday schools for more children. And that pastor took that 54 cents, went back into his church, got up in his pulpit, and told that congregation and the deacons what had happened, and we need to build more for God in this city. And we got 57 cents 
to start out with. And the story is told, and it's a true story, that he got up in the pulpit when he announced that they started looking for more land to build a larger church. And the newspapers picked up the story about this little girl's death, her 57 cents uh, that she had had in her purse, and that the church was looking for property. A realtor came to the church and told that pastor, I got this parcel right over here. It'd be great for you. And the pastor said, we can't afford it. He said, yes, you can. It'll cost you 57 cents. And I've got to tell you something. And that little girl was active thing. Several things happened. I always stop and I look. I have visited this spot. And it's the Temple Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've got to tell you that that church today, when I look at it and I think what God did for them, that seat now has a seating capacity of 3,300 people. They also, out of that 57 cents, started Temple University. Out of that 57 cents, that Baptist church built Good Samaritan Hospital in the city. It still stands today. When we listen to God, when we believe that we can go forward in faith, we can do the impossible. The church. Yeah, Reverend Perry is a uh, a special prophet of God, and I, I'm I'm so glad that we were able to share that with you here today. Um, one of the things that um, Troy Perry started when he started MCC was having communion every single Sunday, and uh, I I say this a lot when I when I'm up here, but uh, I think it's. It, more important today to say it in light of having just heard his his messages that um, he did that and we do it today it's a tradition in MCC we don't do it because the Catholics do it you know they do it and um, we don't do it for any other reason except that he felt from the day he started the first MCC in that little house in Los Angeles that any given Sunday somebody was going to walk through those doors who had been deprived of the communion of, with God for so much time. And so we do that every Sunday. And yes, sometimes I get a little emotional. But I'll get past it and get these words out. <laughs> so just bear with me. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have our communion today because God has led us to this place through the vision of our prophet and our founder of our denomination, Troy Perry. God has led us to this place over 53 years and there's more time for us to do more ministry for more people out there that have yet to hear the message that God loves them. I didn't come up here to preach, so I'm going to stop talking. See, I told you I was going to stop talking. <laughs> I'm really trying to gather myself because I have gotten a little bit emotional. Um, hmm. I am... I'm going to break our tradition. I'm going to go up here to this table because I feel led to do so and to just talk about what Jesus did that night before he died. He did something so unique, something that was just broke time in half. There was before Jesus and after Jesus because of what he did at this table that night. You know, they had that, that Sarder meal, that Passover meal, where in the middle of the table is a cup set um, with wine in it that no one ever touched at the meal because it was there as a symbol for the coming Messiah. Well, at the end of that meal, Jesus did two things. The first thing he did was he picked up a piece of bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, 
this is my body, broken for you. Or as Pastor Mark likes to tell us, that another translation says, this is my essence, open to you. And then he picked up that, uh, that cup, that Elijah cup that sat in the center of the table that nobody ever touched at the starter meal. He picked it up, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my essence poured out for you. Drink this and eat this. Do this in remembrance of me. And I think that how simple those symbols are. Jesus really was saying, eat together. Come together as community. This is where you're going to find me. In community. In us. Through us. Around us. We have to be Jesus here for each other on earth. And we do this in memory of that message today. I invite uh, all of you here to take your little cup and you can open it up and we're soon going to eat the host and drink the juice. And I invite you at home to uh, find something, you know, a piece of toast, a piece of bread, a cracker, a cookie, whatever it is, and some, some liquid, the liquid of your choice, and um, share this meal with us because God has called us together in community to be God for each other, and not only for each other, but for outside these walls, for people who have yet heard this story or understand this story. This is what it's all about. This is all that it's all about. So let us go ahead and open this up and partake of this wonderful, wonderful meal. Amen. Heavenly Creator, we thank you for these elements that uh, symbolize for us your love and your presence in us and around us and through us. We ask you to just, that it just feed us and, and, and move us forward into the places that you've called us to be and move us forward to recognize the things that you've called us to do. Let it be those things. In Jesus' name I pray. We can now rise for the Lord's, sing the Lord's Prayer.
song I sing from rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong. I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel. As we leave this place today, let us remember that we are a part of the family of God, that God calls us to go out into the world and to share the love that God has placed in our hearts with those around us, to represent Christ among us, in us, and through us, together as a community and individually as part of this church, New Life Metropolitan Community Church, and Metropolitan Community Churches throughout the world, and the universal church of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me. 